Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. A recent question I was asked uh, was, why do the ship's captains serve for such a short period of time? Uh, we, we've got two individuals, Captain Carl Holden and uh, Captain Richard Milligan, who were on board for about two years. But most of the other commanding officers were on board for less than a year. And the average for a CEO of this ship is only about 12 months assigned to New Jersey. So why is that the case? Well, uh, the short answer is Battleship New Jersey uh, almost always served in wartime. If you were going to spend the money to have the battleship in service, uh, it was almost always in wartime. In wartime, uh, the Navy, which is basically run like a, a, a business, needs a lot of administration at the top. It means you've got to create more admirals. By the time somebody has been through their career to make the rank of admiral, often they're getting close to the mandatory retirement age. So you, you can't create admirals and then have them around for, for decades. Uh, so you have to constantly be creating new admirals. Especially later on in the ship's career, the, there were a very small number of battleships and capital ships in general in the fleet. And one of the ways to uh, prove yourself as a uh, mid-level officer on your way to Admiral is to command a battleship. So the Navy uh, very intentionally sends its very best to be the commanders of battleships. And if you can successfully complete a term as the commander of battleship, you get promoted up to Admiral, almost across the board. 18 out of Battleship New Jersey's 19 commanding officers go on to attain higher rank. Now, uh, that is not at all standard. If, if you look at the lists of commanding officers for other battleships, the other Iowas, uh, you might not see that. Because if something goes wrong during your tenure as commanding officer of a battleship, you aren't going to go any higher. Uh, whether it was your fault or not, you're the person in charge. That's pretty much the end of your career. Of our 18 commanding officers who make Admiral, uh, who's the one who doesn't? Unfortunately, that's Captain Robert C. Penniston. Penniston was promised command of the ship uh, for the ship's second Vietnam deployment. And he's only on board from August to December of 69. He's getting the ship ready for deployment. And then Congress decides they don't want to spend the money. We're ramping down Vietnam. And uh, so you're going to decommission the ship. Well, Penniston has a connection to New Jersey. He served on board as a midshipman and then got reassigned as a captain later on with these promises of higher command. Only being in charge for a couple of months is not going to give him that experience. And so then he's going to be uh, given, usually alternate a ship and then a shore command, a ship ashore command. Uh, being sent to a shore command after a couple months in command of a battleship is not going to give you the experience you need to make Admiral. So his career was pretty much done at that point. Uh, so he spoke out against the Navy's short-sighted decision to decommission New Jersey in the midst of the Vietnam War. Uh, and that basically ended his career. He doesn't go any higher. Um, at least one of our other commanding officers, uh, Captain Monaco, only makes the rank of Admiral at the very, very end of his career. Uh, it's what was called a tombstone promotion. Monaco uh, also spoke out against decommissioning the battleship at the end of the World War II period going into the Cold War era. Uh, so he was in command from May to February, uh, May 47 to February 48. Uh, and he leaves just a little bit before the ship is decommissioned for it. He, he says he doesn't want to be involved in decommissioning the ship. Uh, so he basically leaves the Navy. Well, especially around World War II, the Navy did uh, a thing called Tombstone Promotions. These guys are all decorated warriors, the ones who uh, are achieving these high ranks. Um, so when they retire, the Navy promotes them to Admiral uh, basically so that they get the benefits of Admiral in retirement, but they never serve as an Admiral actively in the Navy. So like somebody like Monaco, he speaks out about against the Navy decommissioning the ship and, and uh, leaves command. 
So they're like, well, we don't want to make him admiral. Uh, and then he retires and like, okay, make him admiral. He, he served uh, decorated officer in World War II. Let's give him a little bit more benefits in, in retirement. So um, he makes rear admiral right at the end of his career. So that may or may not uh, count here. But going back to why it's uh, such a short time in command, there are just so few of these battleships, uh, especially later on in the ship's career. So you got to rotate these guys through pretty quickly. Uh, and so you only see the ones who are in charge during a prolonged deployment who stay longer. So for example, Carl Holden, uh, during World War II, he commissions the battleship, uh, goes out during the war. Well, you're, you're not going to change your commanding officer in the middle of a war zone. Uh, so he stays in charge until the ship comes back for a, a major yard period. Madam Dow, you will proceed with the commissioning. Aye, aye, sir. Come up! Now, Navy Department, Washington, D.C., 10 March, 1943. From the Chief Naval Personnel to Captain Carl F. Holden, Director of Naval Communications, Naval Operations, Navy Department. Via the Chief of Naval Operations. Subject, change of duty. When directed by the Chief of Naval Operations, you will regard yourself detached from duty as Director of Naval Communications, Naval Operations, Navy Department, and from such other duty as may have been assigned you. Navy Department, and from such other duty as may have been assigned you. We'll proceed to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and report to the Commandant, 4th Naval District, for duty in connection with the fitting out of the USS New Jersey at the Navy Yard, and for duty as commanding officer of that vessel when commissioned. Signed, S.C. Rowan, by direction. And during World War II, uh, because of the forward deployed bases, we were able to keep ships forward deployed. Uh, in fact, they would just rotate out the command staff and change the name of the Big Blue Fleet, as it was called, from 3rd Fleet to 5th Fleet, regardless of uh, what ships were in it. It was the, all the same ships. It's just, is Halsey in charge or is Spruance in charge? And uh, made the Japanese, or the attempt was to make the Japanese think we had twice as many ships as we did by rotating out the fleets, which is something everybody else would have to do. But we had so many uh, ships in a fleet train, we could just keep them forward deployed. So can't change the commanding officer there. Uh, and similarly, Captain Milligan, he uh, is commanding the ship while she's off Beirut, which is an extended deployment because they want to switch New Jersey out for Iowa. Iowa is still going through reactivation. New Jersey went through her 80s reactivation only a year, but she had been in service in 1969. Iowa hadn't been in service since 58, uh, and so it took significantly longer to get her ready than planned. So New Jersey stays off the coast of Beirut for what ended up being the longest deployment of a ship um, since World War II. And so you're not going to switch the commander out mid-deployment. In fact, they swapped Fogarty out on the way to Beirut because he had already had uh, his nine months in command uh, and they wanted, they didn't want him to be stuck on board for another year or more, so he lost the chance to command a battleship in combat. Um, and then Milligan comes in, and he is technically the longest serving commanding officer of the ship while she's in commission. In practice, uh, the commanding officers who were plank owners were also prospective commanding officers. So, for example, Fogarty's in charge from when the ship is commissioned on 28 December 82 uh, for another nine months into September of 83. But uh, he was also in command for much of the year preceding commissioning while the ship was in the yard as the crew was assembled and whatnot. So that doesn't technically count as commanding officer of the ship, but it adds close to another year on his term. Likewise, Holden was the prospective commanding officer uh, for much of Battleship New Jersey's construction, which would technically mean he was the longest person in charge of New Jersey between the time when she was under construction and commission, but that doesn't really count. So likewise, uh, Snyder over here and uh, Tyree here were also plank owning commissioning officers there of the uh, prospective crew. So do you think time in command as a prospective commanding officer should count towards total time in command? 
or just when you're in command of an active commission ship underway. Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.